after his first session, he felt an improvement in how he's getting on and, and things were, were good, you were feeling loose. Very what good, what, what yeah. were the main things that you felt after your first session? Mainly mobility, I was really loose and no, a lot of this pain as well. Yeah. You also noticed from his accent, he's from Australia. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, what do you call this guys over there? You call, you go, you go British guy something, right? Poms. Poms, yeah. yeah. yeah we need to call you, what was the word we call you? We need to call you something. <laughs> okay, so um, Phil is a bodybuilder and he's been training for, um, how long have you been training for? Well, uh, eight years. Eight years, right? Uh, so he's been, um, you know, lifting and he's been training for a long time. You're quite physically in your work as well, right? Yeah, building. Yeah, so he's a builder. So a lot of physical work, always working onto his body. How have you been over the last eight years in terms of your mobility work and your maintenance and looking after your... Not very good. Okay, so basically we've got eight years of catch-up that we're playing with Phil. This is his second session. He came and visited us in our Cardiff clinic um, and he's now coming here into our Leicester clinic to kind of talk up because he's working along this way. Um, so we're going to be doing a, uh, a session where we're going to be uh, using a number of different techniques and we'll be working into a whole range of different areas. One thing he mentioned is that he's really pushing with his training right now. He's um, working with a coach as well, right, who's yeah. pushing him and, and getting him to kind of go a lot heavier with his training. Um, now, he's already introduced a, uh, a stretching and mobility routine into his program, which is what we discussed last time when we gave him some stuff to take away and kind of start implementing. But what I highlighted to him is a lot of time people have their regular stretching routine and they're punctual with that, which is great. But their training um, often increases or, or, or the increase in their training, especially with weightlifting. If you're increasing in, your, in, your, in the load and the amount that you're lifting, then there needs to be some adjustment in your mobility routine. Because you may get to a point where you're frustrated, where you're saying, okay, you know what, I'm lifting, I'm getting these issues, and I'm feeling all of this tightness, but I am stretching. So what's the problem? The problem is, is the scale needs to be balanced. So the amount of mobility work needs to be balanced with the amount of condensing and, and, and tissue restriction that's being caused by the activities that you do. Especially if you're physically working in a job where you're doing the same, and obviously with Phil, he's a builder, so he's quite physically engaged with that. So we'll hopefully uh, give you a bit of an insight into the session and we'll give you a little glimpse of what we're doing with him. Uh, we won't show everything, um, but we'll get, we'll get most of it in for you. Now, he's obviously increased in his um, training and, and what he's doing. And one of the things he's mentioned is that when he's laying down, when he, when he lies down, he feels numbness and he feels pins and needles happening in his arm. Now, quite often when you get pins and needles, um, the first thing that comes to people's mind is, oh, I've got a nerve issue and I've got nerve problems. Now, there's lots of other things that can cause nerve, uh, sorry, that can cause pins and needles and cause similar type of symptoms. However, when your nerve issues or when the pins and needles are transitional, meaning they're coming and going, it's very unlikely that that's from a, from a disc issue or something which is specifically kind of, um, uh, kind of trapped. So often you hear the term trapped nerve. So if the nerve was actually trapped, then you know, technically the, the, the restriction and the, the pins and needles and the symptoms would be there consistently, regardless of what you're doing. Maybe there might be times where they increase or decrease a little bit, but the majority of it would be kind of consistent. Now in his case, he's only getting it when he's laying down. So this tells me that there's a restriction of the nerves going down into his arm. Obviously, they, could, they can be muscular referral as well. Um, but from the, what, what he's describing in his history, it tells me or sounds like that there's some restriction somewhere along the brachial plexus. So the nerves that come out of the neck and go all the way into the arm. Now, whenever you have a nerve issue, it could be, you know, people always, as I said, people always think that it's something from the neck. But think of it like a train track. It goes all the way down. There could be a blockage anywhere along that pathway. So it's not always that it's here. People ignore all of the different points. We've got, you know, the, the, the thoracic outlet, you've got your pec muscles, you've got the, the clavicle, you've got your scalenes, you've got all of the tissues going down the arm. There's areas in the forearm where you can have restriction, you can have restriction in the in the um, the carpal tunnel as well. So there's there's a concept which we call double crush as well. So it could be that there's multiple sites of restriction. So we're gonna be working down the whole pathway to try and loosen everything up so we cover all ground so we make sure that regardless of what my diagnosis is, even if I think, that, okay, you know what, restriction is happening in one area as opposed to the other, we're gonna cover all grounds in today's session. Okay, so let's get you lifting both arms up as high as you can go. Okay, let's see if you can touch them together at the top. Okay, turn your palms inwards. Okay, and try and straighten your elbows out. Okay, and what we can see, you can see you're shaking there, right? So you're struggling. You're feeling a lot of tightness doing that? Yeah. What are you feeling mostly? Traps. Yeah, your traps, so feeling a restriction there. Yeah. And from where I'm standing as well, I can see a difference in the gap that we have between the ear and the shoulder. And on this side, there's a much bigger gap. So it's showing me that there's more, there's slightly more movement on his right shoulder than there is the left. Okay, let's get you resting down. You're getting the pins and needles more on one side than the other? Um, yeah, probably the left side. Yeah, this feels 
different as well to this side. This feels a lot more tense. More tender as well, yeah? Yeah, a lot tender. Yeah, okay. All right, so we're gonna work into all these areas. Okay, so you can see we've just been working into the trap. And one of the techniques that we use here is obviously the instrument dated technique. Now, when we've been working into that, Phil mentioned that he's pulled his, his, his kind of trap and he's pulled this area um, quite a few times in the past. Even though this isn't the main thing that's coming up, um, or, or the main thing he's, he's kind of uh, complaining about, we can see very clearly that there's a, there's a lesion within that tissue and it's kind of prop, propped up right there. I'd probably say it's more in the levator scapula kind of coming up rather than the, the trap itself. Um, we can't always see because obviously there's layers of tissue, but it feels, feels a little bit more deeper than the trap. But I don't know if you, how well you can see that there. And can you feel that, Phil? Can you feel the difference? Yeah. Yeah, when I'm pressing in yeah. here versus pressing in here. Yeah, very different. Yeah, so this is one of the, one of the beauties of using this technique is you can literally see the lesions within the tissue that, you know, an X-ray, MRI scan, and not even an ultrasound would pick up this kind of stuff. Um, but it gives us a, a focal area to work on. And then when combining it with other techniques such as cupping, acupuncture, or other release techniques, it really gives us a, a kind of a, a bullseye of what to focus on. Um, rather than kind of working on the whole area and sometimes missing, which is what happens often when people have massage and things like that. They have everything worked on, but the areas that really, really need the attention, they kind of just get skimmed over. Just turning as far as you can go. Back to the way. That's good. So this is what we call a reproduction of pain of complaint, or reproduction of the complaint. If you can assess someone and, you, and, you, and you're able to reproduce the problem okay, by pushing a button, like for example, pressing into his pec minor or working into a particular area, that is a pretty strong indication as to kind of you found the problem. Um, quite often when people have musculoskeletal issues, as I said, they, were, they rely on imaging, right? They go to you know, hospitals and they have x-rays and MRIs and often those, those uh, results come up with, with nothing significant. Um, and if they do find something, which what I would often call a coincidental finding, so let's say they say, well, there's a slight disc bulge in your neck, then they say, oh, well, that must be the reason why it's happening. And, you know, I've seen patients to the extent where they've even been lined up for surgery. When I've assessed them and I can see very clearly that the issues are coming from, let's say, for example, soft tissues or from other areas, and they're lined up for surgery, like serious, significantly dangerous, you know, life-risking surgery, when you know the the system fails them because the assessment isn't happening properly and they're not using techniques such as the techniques that we're able to use here to help pinpoint and find the problems you okay yeah you're doing very good with your poker face right now <laughs> <laughs> okay what we're going to do now is a little bit of active release technique which is a technique where we clamp the tissue okay so if we have a tissue which spans from here to here if you stretch it it may be stretching in the parts which are stretchy and if there's knots and tightness in the area in in the muscle for example those tight areas will choose not to stretch and the more flexible areas will um will will allow the, the flexibility and will allow that stretch so you may be getting that stretch and you may be loosening it up but the tight areas are still remaining tight so when we use active release technique all we do is we clamp the tissue okay so i'm going to hold it here and I'm creating a separate site of tension. So now the tension or the stretch is happening primarily here. Whereas this area, you can see even the tissue is not stretching, okay? And you can feel that quite focused, yeah? Okay, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go along the pathway of that tissue and I'm gonna get that focused stretch along the pathway of the tissue. So we're getting the stretch now all the way through rather than through one area. He's only in his kind of uh, second session today, but we haven't built up that relationship enough, but otherwise I would get my elbow right in there and, and yeah. But he's not at that level yet. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing well. You're doing well though. You're not screaming because we're on camera, right? No. Nah, yeah. I don't know what to expect that. Yeah. The last time. <laughs> so when you have a, 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 when you stretch the tissues at any point, what happens is kind of, it'll stretch to a certain degree and then your, your body will kind of how can I say, you kind of, you'll go back to that yeah. same position. But when you have a prolonged stretch, um, the, best, the best way to describe it is from a perspective kind of engineering, right? If you have a elastic band and you drop a weight on an elastic band and yeah. it bounces, the tissue just goes back to its original length yeah. and you get kind of an elastic deformation or elastic change rather. So it goes back to how it was. If you leave the weight hanging there, 
and you leave it for a prolonged period of time, what happens is on a microscopic level, small amounts of those fibers start to fray. Yeah. Um, and then you get what we call plastic deformation. Yeah. So it changes when you have like a long stress. Now, in your soft tissue sense, it's a little bit different because your nervous system is actually guiding the tension. So your, your body feels a stretch and it's like, okay, this is stretching, this is stretching, this is stretching. And your body's like waiting for it to release and it's like, hang on a second, this is still stretching. So from your, 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 your natural kind of self-protection mechanism, your body's like, if it carries on stretching at this rate, we're going to start having preposteresis, which means the small frame is going to start having tissue damage. So what does your body do? It says, well, this stretching isn't going away. We better loosen up. Yeah. Right? So it actually changes the tonus within the tissue and the tissue kind of relaxes out. And this is why you're probably feeling it right now. It just feels like super relaxed, right? Yeah. yeah because your body's literally doing, it, it engages a certain part of your nervous system, which causes muscle relaxation. So, so your body's giving you a dose of a muscle relaxant, basically. Feeling all right? Yeah, good. Good. Okay. Perfect.